Hey guys, in this position the legendary master Vasily Ivanchuk as black played the surprising move rook takes a4 and his opponent resigned here. Notice black pieces are not too active, the bishop is on g7, the other bishop on d7 and the rook is back on f8. The queen is a little more active but everything seems to be very well controlled here by minor pieces. So this move seems to be just uh, losing a piece. So why did white resign in this position? Well we are going to analyze that very soon but first let's see how they got this position on the board. Purian is playing as white and Ivanchuk is playing as black. So knight f3 which is a very flexible move in the opening because white could be playing some of the pawns later and Ivanchuk plays d5 then g3, g6, c4 targeting the center and black plays c6 wanting to recapture with the pawn in the center. There is queen a4 which seems to be a little strange because usually we don't bring the queen out early in the opening however the move has some idea for example right now they are, they are pinning so white could be taking forcing queen takes pawn and then developing getting tempos with black queen that's why Ivanchuk is playing here d4 a very normal move here is bishop g2 however a Purian plays here b4 taking some space in the queen side and also preparing bishop b2 then uh, we have knight d7 and there is bishop b2 here um, this pawn is hanging maybe white could try to capture the pawn but it seems like after knight takes pawn bishop g7 uh, black has some compensation some very good compensation in this middle game after e3 then there are too many weaknesses in white's position black could be playing e5 and this position seems to be very good for black there is a good compensation for the pawn down so if white doesn't capture that pawn they just play here bishop b2 and then uh, Ivanchuk is playing e5 e3 bishop g7 white plays here bishop g2 but let's see uh, one more time the pawn uh, it's not a good idea to capture this pawn after pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and bishop takes d4 a black can trade and well black is winning in this position if you want you can pause the video and try to find the right move I will say it right now black is winning here with knight b6 because now we are attacking the queen also attacking the knight unprotected in the center so black is going to have at least a uh, one piece in this variation so after bishop g7 uh, white is not capturing the pawn on d4 because it doesn't make too much sense by now White is playing bishop g2, the game continues uh, with knight a6, also knight e7 works very well, and white castles, black castles as well, and knight a3. Now there is this move a5, very interesting, trying to activate the rook with that move. The threat here is knight b6, and then capture, and then the file is going to be half open. Well, um, white is taking the pawn on d4, and a normal move here is pawn takes pawn but Shug is playing this interesting e4 the idea is that now he's threatening the knight and the knight has to go back a move like knight h4 shouldn't be working because of g5 and the knight is trapped so knight e1 and well now the idea we mentioned about knight b6 queen b3 and a takes b4 after queen takes b4 this move knight a4 is very interesting there are some threats here for example uh, black is taking the bishop and taking the pawn later with a skewer also the knight could be unprotected over here but also black is threatening for example c5 because if the if white takes the bishop uh, will be hanging over here so this position is looking actually very interesting white is playing here bishop c3 and in this position Ivanchuk is playing one of my favorite moves in this game pause the video if you want to find it I will say it right now the move black played here is the beautiful e3 sacrificing the pawn now white can take it with two pawns well uh, let's analyze in the game Purian takes here with f but let's see what could happen if white takes d takes e3 here then there is this move c5 attacking the queen also attacking the pawn on d4 the queen has to go back to b3 then we can capture and we can capture on d4 
if there is a, another capture then the bishop will take and there is a skewer and one more time the knight unprotected on a3 and if they don't capture if they play something like queen b3 keep, to keep protecting the knight then there is d takes e3 threatening e, uh, e2 also threatening the rook on a1 white could try rook d1 attacking the queen but then black could try queen e7 moving the queen attacking the knight and again e2 is a threat this position is a decisive advantage for black so after this e3 uh, the capture with pawn is not uh, with the d pawn is not really working because of c5 so Purian is taking with the other pawn then we continue with the same idea c5 d takes c5 uh, knight takes c3 and d takes c3 and then we have this queen d2 and that was the idea of uh, the sacrifice on e3 now uh, the structure is very bad extremely bad for white i mean they have triple pawns over here and also isolated pawn on e3 and well they are getting black is getting some pawn back very soon because now they are targeting c3 and e3 well, the game continues here with knight b5 and knight g4 is very well because the knight is not really in a good position so the knight is helping coordinated now with the queen very active um, white continues knight f3 and then we capture and we check getting the exchange notice if the king moves here uh, we can play knight d3 getting the queen so white has to take the knight and then the game continues with a uh, queen takes f2 Right now, black has the exchange up. However, black, uh, white has a couple of pawns as compensation. As we said, the pawns are in a very bad position. They are triple pawns. They are isolated. Also, this one is isolated. So it seems like uh, it's not enough compensation. It, se it seems like in the end, black is clearly better. But well, the game is still interesting. And black is taking right now on a2. That's why white is playing here a4. Black continues with development, bishop d7, and then here white is playing knight c7, which is not a good idea. A better move was knight bd4, coordinating minor pieces, putting the knight in a central square, also blocking a little this uh, bishop in the great diagonal. Well, after knight c7, this is the position we had at the beginning of the video. Here Ibanshuk is playing the great move, rook takes a4, and for some reason, not clear at all Purian resigns so uh, what could happen after a uh, rook takes a4 well uh, I will explain it I will say it right now but if you want pause the video and try to find it I think it's going to be a very good exercise of course it's a little tough it's not easy at all but it's very interesting well the right move after this uh, rook takes a4 was the great fantastic move bishop a3 and well the idea is that we are certainly checkmate here on g2 so white doesn't have too many options for example a knight h4 there are some ways to win but bishop takes bishop and queen f1 is mating too so say white takes the bishop which seems to be the only move then black could continue queen takes knight check bishop g2 is not working now because then queen d1 bishop f1 and queen takes bishop is checkmate so after a uh, queen takes knight white needs to play king g1 and then there is this bishop takes c3 and this is just winning the game black is getting the queen on b4 and black is threatening bishop d4 also checkmate so that's the reason why after this rook takes a4 white resigns in this position because if they take there is bishop a3 if they go back something like queen b1 then a uh, Black could continue trading rooks and also getting some other pawn over here, so it could be winning very easily for Black. The question for today: Could you solve some of the challenges in this Masters game? Let me know in the comments. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Help my channel with some like if it was like that. Subscribe so you get notifications for my next videos. Never stop believing. See you in the next and happy new year. <laughs>